Just ask Kenneth. What's going on everybody? Ken in here, just lounging, you know, enjoying the day. I hope you're enjoying yours. It's time for another Ask Cam Ken question. Really in a good mood. The weather is fantastic. Tom's in town, but we got to get the things. Uh, you Patreon supporters, we want to thank you. And uh, we do that by sharing your questions that you ask me on Patreon. And you guessed that today's question has to do with cherry heads and redfoot tortoises. And we're going to dive into this subject right now. This question comes from... I believe her name is Jen Rocket. Let me double check. I forget things very quickly when it doesn't when it doesn't involve turtles and tortoises. I forget things. Yeah, Jen Rocket. Rocket, don't stop it. Rocket, don't stop it. I don't know if you know that song. I used to roller skate I, to I that never one. Heard that song. You never heard that song? Rocket, don't stop it. You got a rocket, don't stop. Do you guys know disco what it's like? roller skate? No, not disco about? roller skate. Like back in the like back in the eighties, uh, we would like roller skate every Friday night, and I'd break dance. I'd break dance at the place. But anyway, someone knows rocket, don't stop it. You know what I'm talking about. Someone out there knows what I'm talking about. Please share in the comments. Jen asks me, hey, Cannon. I have a red foot and I have a cherry head. The female may not be a full cherry head, but she wants to know, can a cherry head and a red foot breed? <laughs> I almost forgot again, see? Yeah, can they breed? Dive down here with me. So uh, the answer is absolutely yes. The two can breed because, get ready, drum roll, they're actually the same species. Cherry heads are red foot tortoises. Uh, the difference is, is that they come from a specific locale. And there are Brazilian cherry heads, and there's even a type of cherry head red, to red foot tortoise from Bolivia, Bolivian uh, cherry heads. And what that means, guys, is that generally the Brazilian cherry heads stay smaller and they keep a red head. They also have more of this. If I were to wet this animal here, let me see. Let's, let's wet this tortoise, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're going to just give her a little bit of a bath. All right, do you see this pretty marbling? Okay, that happens in the cherry heads. They get a really pretty marbling on their shelves. Some even get white in between. So they're a very, very colorful and, and just, I would almost say luscious, uh, lusciously colored type of redfoot tortoise and they're found in these small locales so what's happened is they become something of a subspecies but their dna is very similar to the redfoot tortoise which grows larger and gets a yellow head as it ages uh and basically oh look at that don't you be mean uh, and basically they uh are the same tortoise just a little less colorful but you see this prettiness now guys i even have one in here i'm gonna find it you're gonna love this uh Let's see, I want to show you this smaller one that I received a few months back, or actually it's almost a year ago now, but let's see if I can find it. Ooh, there's a lot of poop in there. Oh, there he is. He's right here. I got to clean that out too. Okay, so let me just give this one a rinse because this one has just such a beautiful, look at the bottom too. The bottom coloration on this animal is just incredible. Oh, see that? Isn't that beautiful? Look at how beautiful that is. And that's one of the ways you tell a cherry head from a red foot, right? So I'm going to bring this guy over to the red foot enclosure, but you can really see it's just a beautiful animal. Now, I love to keep animals as they are in nature. So in nature, why do you think this guy has all this different coloration, whereas the red foots tend to not? These guys, cherry heads tend to be, you know, more of an animal that they're found uh, in forested areas. So this is going to be more of a camouflage for this animal in a forested area. Whereas redfoots have a more wide range. We're going over to the redfoots now. They can be found in uh, humid grasslands as well. Uh, they're found in all sorts of locales in a wide range. And here they all are. So you can just see, as we get to them, you're really gonna see the difference in their shells. And right now, here's one walking towards its water bowl. So let's, let's get some water on that. But do you guys see the difference? Okay, all the redfoots here have a yellow head. Okay, they start out with a red head, but they lose it as they grow older. And you can see it's a beautiful shell, but more black and less of this marbling. And then if we were to oh, flip this little gal over, you can see much different, right? So 
it's just a very different type of tortoise when it comes to the coloration. Still colorful, still beautiful, uh, just not quite as ornate as this cherry head. That being said, Jen, they can interbreed. It's not really interbreeding because they're the same species. Um, it's fine. They can have uh, fertile offspring as well because they're not really hybrids. Um, they're just hybrids between the subspecies, okay? So uh, there you have a pretty good indication or a um, explanation rather. Well, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. What so do you got? What, what do you get when those two interbreed? What, 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 what would be dominant? Does he, uh, do you know? I don't know. It just depends. I really don't know. I don't know much about, you know, what would be what. I know that you would have, you know, you could potentially have an interesting uh, animal. I know that there was a, uh, we've bred Darth Maul with a hypo, uh, oh, yeah, we right. bred her with a hypo, cherry, uh, hypo red foot, which hypo means it has no black. Hypomelanistic. There's no black in that animal, so it was all yellow, the, the adult. But we had beautiful um, coloration from Darth Maul. You want to see Darth Maul? Yeah. Let's show her. So Darth Maul's over here. Uh, she's got such a really beautiful face. And here she is walking over here. Um, I'm going to put this little guy back. And we'll bring Darth Maul over. Oh, Darth Maul is a larger cherry head. Oh, let's see. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at that. Okay, so there is still, you can see. Dude, he got big. Oh, no, she. She's always she? been this large. Yeah, no. she's a big, yeah, I'm telling I feel you. feel like Darth Maul was not that big. No, Darth Maul's always been this big. Really? Yeah, man, I promise. Oh, Look let's see what the shell, yeah, she's gorgeous. Hold on, Darth Maul. Just give me a second, sweetie. So you can get, you can really see when they're wet. Uh, just the beautiful darkness to the shell. But look at all this light, okay, lights in the shell. Now, this is an old animal. But again, look at the face. Look oh, at her whoa. beautiful head. Oh gosh, uh, upwards of 30 years, uh, 30 years old easily. You can look at her eyes, and that's why, you know, when we sell Darth Maul babies, you know, you do pay a little bit more, but you're paying for that beautiful coloration. Uh, she's just an impressive animal. All her babies tend to be extremely bright, extremely beautiful animals. Uh, but here, here are some other cherry heads you can really see when I wet them. Just a variation in their shells, but there are still little flex it just depends on how many see the difference even within the cherry head some are just a little bit more specked and uh colorful than others whoa <laughs> they're all over the place yeah I, i've got a question it really has nothing to do it's a selfish personal question yeah go ahead i, love I really like the cherry heads yeah i live course. in connecticut what could i keep them like i could keep them outdoors just in the summer just they in be the okay summer there? they'd be all right though, they'd right? be all right because it's humid in the summer especially now you guys, guys to come back in and connect well hold on you guys oh. are having a really hot humid summer which you normally do up there in new york and new jersey and connecticut so outside yes but uh i would start bringing these animals in uh, at the end of august uh maybe middle of september depending how long that the nights stay above 65 degrees once it gets that's below 65 okay. degrees got to get these animals back inside I think that's the big thing everyone wants to know like what's that temp cut off yeah Is i would that for say most species that you would say I, that any tropical species i just wouldn't let get colder than uh you know 65 my personal opinion there are others that do things differently i tend to yield on the side of caution because i wouldn't want any kind of pathogen to attack these animals while their bodies were shutting down because reptiles even though they don't hibernate they still have a response of shutting their bodies down and each system goes down one by one the colder they get appetite gets suppressed then maybe their uh, immune system gets suppressed and that's how they get sick people think you get sick because you are cold that's not what happens it's just um, what happens is with colds um, you find that in humans, let's talk humans really quick, a little more information than you probably bargained for, Jen. But the reason cold season happens so much in the north, uh, northern parts of the world is because people congregate indoors and they can spread the disease much easier. When we're outside uh, and not in an air conditioning that's cycling air through a whole building, you get sick. You get sick from being run down, from being stressed. Same thing happens with these animals. Uh, if their immune system from being cool starts shutting down, they can be attacked by some kind of pathogens that normally wouldn't bother them. So that's what we mean, why we don't want them to get cold, because it just 
potentially could bring down their immuno response and allow them, uh, you know, the, the, they could become attacked by some of these bugs that live out there. So I go 65 and above. Uh, and again, you don't want to go too hot. Anything higher in a basking area than 100 degrees. Now that's a basking area. You want the ambient temperatures to go up to about 90, 92 degrees ambient. And then in the shade, you want to lower that down into the 80s. So uh, that's what I would suggest. These are a great species for up north because as you saw with the redfoots, they don't get as large as redfoots generally. We do have, some, we do have Darth Maul who's an outlier. Um, but anyhow, uh, you want to make sure, look at these lunatics, they keep following me and I'm wearing sandals. Oh my goodness. Anyway, that's the uh, answer to the question, Jen. Okay, I think we did a good job. We traveled a lot, <laughs> not really. We just went there to here, back and forth. But uh, we saw and learned a little bit about uh, two of my favorite species and two very popular species that are in the pet trade. And I think a lot of you guys watching have some red foots and cherry heads. Let me know in the comments below. Do you have red foots or cherry heads? Have they bred for you? Have they crossbred? Help us out in the comments below. Let's finish the thought. Let's finish the topic in the comments, all right? Thank you very much, guys. If you like the video, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe to Camp Cannon. Go to the Army channel also while I'm getting attacked by these guys. And uh, finally, thank you to our Patreon supporters. And if you want to support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Camp Cannon. I'm leaving, but you guys can stay and watch these maniacs crowd Tom's camera.